In order to be able to draw and position entities accurately in our drawing space, CorelCAD offers us two features called Snap Mode and eSnap. Snap Mode uses an invisible grid within the graphics area and when we move or click the pointer or the cursor on our drawing space or we draw an entity, the cursor is always snapping to points on this invisible snap grid. To turn on Snap Mode, all we need to do is press the F9 button. The snapping distance also specifies the cursor resolution or the cursor accuracy. For example, when you set the snapping distance to one inch, the mouse movements in the drawing area will be accurate to the nearest inch. And snapping does not affect the cursor when it's outside of the drawing area. If on the other hand you set it to 0.5 meters, the cursor will jump around the screen in half meter increments. To turn on snap mode, you can either use the F9 button as we just mentioned, or you can click the snap button. To specify the snap distance, right click on the snap button and launch into the settings. CorelCAD now displays the snap section of the options dialog box, but we're not going into too much detail at the moment. We'll be tweaking these settings a little later on during the tutorial. But because the snapping distance, however, is invisible, many users prefer also to turn on the grid so that they can actually see where they're snapping to. And to do this, we need to go into grid mode. So I'm just going to cancel out of here at the moment. And let's consider the grid mode. The grid is an array of evenly spaced dots that provide you with an idea of the distances in the drawing. So, for example, when you set your grid spacing up to 1000 millimeters, you can see how far a meter stretches, no matter how close or how far away you zoom in and out of your drawing. Just as with snap mode, you turn grid mode on by clicking on the grid button and the grid options again are set by right clicking on the grid and going into the settings. Let's continue by taking a look at ortho mode. Ortho mode forces the cursor to travel in horizontal or in vertical directions only and of course in 90 degree increments. This is a useful setting, especially because many drawings contain many lines just at right angles to each other. To turn on orthographic mode, just click on the ortho button, and this button has no options. It only gives you the option to move vertically and horizontally. Let's now try to draw some lines in ortho mode. I'm just going to give in my line command. I'm going to specify my starting point and now as I move my cursor around my drawing space I can only move vertically or horizontally. As useful as ortho mode may be, polar mode gives you much more flexibility when it comes to drawing angles at various increments. Polar mode lets you draw accurately at fixed angles in increments such as 15 or 45 degrees. And together with snap mode activated, polar mode will solve the problem of drawing accurately using only the mouse cursor. With polar snapping activated, let's right click and go into the polar mode settings. Here you can see that polar guides are enabled, but at the moment the incremental angles are set to 90 degrees. So let's just go down here and change this to 15 degrees. You can also display polar guide angles at specific angles. So for example, you can activate this and add a specific angle. Let's just click on apply and OK to exit this. I'm just going to draw another line, specify my starting point, And you can see that as I'm now moving through the screen at 15 degree angles, my polar snapping guidelines are now appearing on the screen. Let's now take a look at the eSnap mode. Entity Snap causes the cursor to snap to geometric features of entities such as endpoints of lines or the midpoints of arcs or the tangent points of circles. 
NCT SNAPs are called eSnaps for short, and in many other CAD programs, these are also known as object snaps. And this mode is absolutely crucial if you want to draw from one geometric feature to another, for example, from a center of a circle to the midpoint of an arc. And to turn on Entity Snap, you click on the eSnap button, and again, right-clicking on this button will take us into the settings. Here in the settings for Entity Snaps, we can see that it's enabled at the moment. We have a selection of 13 different Entity Snapping points, but not all of these are activated. For example, we can also click to snap to reference points, to visual intersection, parallel lines, and also to the nearest. And here you have the option to select all snapping points or to clear all of the snapping points. Let's just click on Apply and say OK. To make it easier to snap to objects, we can also tweak our eSnap cue points. We go up to Tools, Options, make sure that User Preferences are selected, Drafting Options, Display and Pointer Cues. And here we see the colour of our eSnap cues. Of course, if you're working on a black background, yellow is a nice colour here, but you can change the colour for the cue snaps and you can also change the size of these. Let's just click on Apply and OK. Let's now take a look at eTrack mode. eTrack tells you when the geometric features line up with a cursor, such as the ends of lines or centre of circles, etc. This mode works in conjunction with eSnaps, and eTrack, which is another word for entity tracking, is also known as O-Tracking in a few other CAD programs. And this is how it works. So to illustrate e-tracking, I'm first of all going to start a line entity, and with my cursor now, as I move next to an adjacent entity, you'll see that the paths of the nodes are being tracked, and the center of my circle now has an additional circle in the middle, and as I move near to the object, you'll also see tooltips appearing to tell me where exactly I'm snapping to. So here's the midpoint, center point of the circle, quadrant point, etc, etc. So CoralCAD found the center point of the circle above the line, and I'm now able to snap to my various points here and join up my entities.